Good morning. Welcome to CADEX TV. My name is Frank Fortunato. Today is Thursday, July 7th, 2016. If you want to follow us on Twitter, please go to CADEX TV. There are reports coming out of uh, the Middle East and Africa uh, regarding Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu's four-nation African tour. Apparently, uh, the Jerusalem Post is also reporting this as well. Security forces in Kenya have foiled an attempt to assassinate Netanyahu, uh, which had included a plan to attack his convoy uh, during his visit to Nairobi. An anonymous source told the Jerusalem Post last night that shortly before Netanyahu left the uh, uh, Nairobi airport on his way to his hotel, uh, Kenyan security forces informed the Israeli security people that the convoy must change its route. An argument apparently ensued between the Israeli security agents and the Kenyans, uh, but ultimately the Israelis did change their convoy and arrived safely at the hotel. Uh, subsequently, two people were arrested. Um, the uh, incident now has also included several additional alterations in Netanyahu's schedule in Kenya. He is now safely out of Kenya and is in Addis Ababa in Ethiopia. When he was asked about it at a press conference, uh, he appeared genuinely surprised and said this was the first he'd heard of it. Uh, Netanyahu's four-nation Africa visit includes Rwanda, Kenya, Uganda, and Ethiopia. A uh, powerful typhoon that we reported on yesterday is approaching eastern Taiwan. It's now reached super typhoon status. This would be Typhoon Nepartak. It's weakened a little bit. It still has sustained winds of about 127 miles per hour, but gusts of about 149. It already has uh, waves of about 24 feet uh, out at sea. Uh, NASA is suggesting that the cloud tops for the hurricane currently reach about 56,000 feet, which means that the thunderheads around the typhoon's eye are punching through the top of the atmosphere. Predicted rainfall rates when it hits Taiwan that could be as high as seven inches per hour. Hong Kong's two biggest airlines, Cathay Pacific and Dragon Air, said that they've already canceled flights to and from Taiwan. And meanwhile, it's expected that the uh, tropical storm or the super typhoon is going to pass over Taiwan and hit southern China. Standard & Poor's is questioning the viability of so-called hedge fund reinsurers amid struggling underwriting profitability and declining returns in equity. You'll recall that hedge fund reinsurers uh, were set up with the reasoning that the hedge fund managers would be able to achieve better investment returns than traditional reinsurers. Uh, that might be the true, but part of the uh, improved process also included sustained improvements in underwriting returns. Unfortunately, as we know, interest rates have declined and continue to remain low, so the improved investment returns are not quite there, and underwriting returns are affected uh, like everyone else, by the low premiums. According to Standard & Poor's, um, underwriting at hedge fund reinsurers has largely underperformed traditional reinsurance peers. Uh, they believe that subpar net investment and income and poor underwriting results will continue to drive this decline. Munich Re CEO Nicholas von Baumhard uh, is expecting a soft Brexit following the UK's vote to leave the EU. Von Baumhard spoke to about 50 reporters yesterday in Germany. He uh, called on politicians in Brussels to reform the EU, uh, but said that the German reinsurer could actually, in the short run, benefit from the UK leaving. Uh, he noted that most of their accounts are held in US dollars, which has strengthened. So uh, oddly enough, he noted that it's had an upward effect on them. They don't have too many holdings in British pounds, which have declined. He predicts that the uh, turmoil which he had originally envisaged to last about one to two years is going to extend quite far into the future. He also noted that the European Union has a considerable amount of work to do because there are obviously uh, popular pressures from within the EU as exemplified by the Brexit vote that need to be addressed. In the Chinese city of Wuhan, a city with 10 million people, uh, severe flooding has struck. Um, across China now, about 180 people have been killed in the southern part of the country as a result of floods. Uh, the Premier of China has called upon local authorities uh, to aid in the rescue effort of Wuhan. Uh, transport links, water and power supplies to the 10 million population city are down at the moment. 
mild earthquake with a preliminary magnitude of 4.2 has struck in northern Algeria with shaking felt in the capital of Algiers. The quake struck at about 9.52 p.m. local time last night. Uh, there have been no immediate report of damage or injuries. Meanwhile, in the South China Sea, three U.S. destroyers continue to sail fairly close to the Chinese-held reefs and islands in uh, the disputed area in recent weeks. The destroyers have been patrolling near uh, the Spratly Archipelago, uh, which the Chinese have essentially taken over and dredged and actually put in an airplane landing strip. Um, this is all in advance of a ruling expected on July 12th by the International Court of Justice in The Hague, uh, which is going to settle a dispute between China and the Philippines. Uh, the Chinese have already indicated that they question the legality of the uh, jurisdiction of the court and intend to ignore it. Meanwhile, the United States, in addition to the destroyers, has also sent the uh, aircraft carrier uh, USS Ronald Reagan as well as its escort ships into the area uh, too. It's expected now if the uh, legal opinion goes against China, a period of prolonged uncertainty in the area will continue. Uh, the American uh, Navy is steaming about 14 to 15 miles away from the Chinese occupied islands, um, still far out from the 12 nautical mile range. Uh, that is uh, typically required for international boundaries if one was to agree that China, in fact, owned the islands. Uh, tension is going to continue in this area. Right now, the Chinese Navy, as well as Chinese fishing trawlers, are constantly trailing the American naval ships. Um, if and when the USS Ronald Reagan nuclear-powered aircraft carrier gets involved in the act, the tensions will significantly rise. That's the news for today. If we have any breaking news, we'll come back and tell you. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you tomorrow.